Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to Knowledge 16, everybody. <laughs> this is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. And we're here live at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. This is our fourth knowledge. Uh, hashtag no16, check out crowdchat.net slash no16. Bert Lattimore is in there documenting the conversations on theCUBE. Chris Orr is here, he's the Vice President of Support Strategy at Epicor Software. Chris, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming yeah, on. Thank you. So, knowledge 16, what's your, what's your quick take on what's going on here? Oh, it's definitely a lot of excitement going on. Lots of people, you know, it's, uh, I was here at Knowledge 15, you know, you can just tell that there's a lot more people here, a lot more uh, activity, hustle bustle. It's, uh, it's been a great experience so far. So tell us about Epicor Software. What do you guys do? What's your role there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Epicor is an ERP software manufacturer. We're the sixth largest in the world. Uh, we focus on industry specialized uh, 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 companies that are in things like lumber, electrical, plumbing, retail services, those types of vertical industries that are looking for uh, essentially business management software. Um, we, uh, we've grown over acquisition over the last 25 years. Uh, we have collected about 83 different market offerings that uh, uh, customers have purchased uh, with about a 20-something thousand customer base. So a fairly, uh, fairly sizable number of uh, clients that we, uh, we, we provide services for. 83 different offerings, so those are all different kind of vertical solutions or different yeah, applications Yeah, that's exactly within? right. Those are all uh, different market offerings. There's all kinds of modules and add-ons and capabilities, both with you know, Epicor software as well as our partner network, you know, that will go on to those things. But uh, over the years, you know, the different software has evolved and changed. Uh, I would say it's a, you know, it's a much smaller number in terms of our you know, true you know, sales in, for new clients. You know, right. We have uh, five leading products uh, that uh, are well known in the marketplace, but if you look at all the various products that we deliver, uh, it's 83 different software products. And as a support organization, my role, I own uh, the strategy for our customer service or our external facing support. We're supporting all those clients that continue to use our products you know, throughout the years. So while sales may be focused on the new stuff, you know, we're still you know, uh, very much engaged with customers that are using uh, all of our products. So, Frank, in his keynote this morning, uh, <clears throat> was talking about the, the, the great estates of the software business. I guess you guys are in the, in the first estate, the ERP estate, and he talked about the CRM estate, and then, of course, ServiceNow being the service management estate. Right. But so it's interesting because <clears throat> you um, obviously consume ServiceNow, You're, you, you are, have an affinity for ServiceNow, and you're in that first estate. So, Talk about how service management touches the ERP space that you're in and yeah. how you see service management evolving. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a couple of different aspects of it. You know, what it means for Epicor is a, uh, just shy of a billion dollar uh, software company versus our customer base, uh, which tends to be more that mid-market space, so you know, they're, they're a bit smaller. You know, it does mean different things. Uh, mm -hmm. Our ERP solutions is everything that one would imagine, you know, is used by manufacturers, distributors, and retail services, which is the markets that we serve, uh, running everything, you know, from your quote to cash cycles, you know, to your, you know, specific GL, EP, AR, all of those elements. Um, CRM is obviously a component of that. They're serving customers and they're managing customers. They're managing everything from pipeline all the way through delivery and customer service. And our ERP solutions deliver a lot of those capabilities within it. But when you get to a certain size, like we are, you know, we're starting to look for something a little bit different, uh, a little bit more advanced. And so, uh, you know, as most companies of our size do, we have a strategy around our ERP solution. We happen to use our own software for that. We have a strategy around our front office. Uh, we are, happen to be Salesforce customers. We use Marketo in the marketing space. And as we began to look at what did we want to do in the customer service space, uh, we wanted to do something that was very wholly different and frankly leading in the market. And so we've been looking at and have in fact have deployed uh, a service management based solution, the ServiceNow customer service management module as our external facing component, right? So that third leg of the stool uh, is, is, is really become something very different than what we, our heritage has been, which is using CRM type technology to do that. Okay, so. Uh, did you feel as though um, CRM technology kind of hit, hit its limits and you needed something that had more legs? Can you talk about the sort of journey that you're on with regard to service management and, and, and where are you today and where do you see it going? 
Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that depends on what you as a company are actually delivering when you talk about your customer support experience. Uh, if it's simple questions, you know, say B2C type stuff where mm -hmm. it's, you know, I have a particular product and I have one question and I'm, and I'm going away, you know, the CRM approach, I think, you know, continues to work. We deliver a technology-based service. It's a complex service. There are lots of, you know, elements to it. Uh, there's uh, lots of people that are engaged from one particular customer of ours. And so, uh, we, and we really looked at the space. We said, we want to do more than just, you know, answer a question. We want to deliver a, a customer service experience, you know, that's well beyond what I think we can accomplish accomplished with CRM-based technology. And it's everything from how do we optimize service, which is better for our customers, we're delivering service faster, we're getting the right answer um, you know, the first time, uh, to what the engagement experience is, what our portal looks like, you know, to how we operate internally, so that you know, when you look at the service management pillars, things like incident, problems, service catalog, knowledge, we're using all of those principles to engineer a different customer service experience the way we operate, and thus what we actually deliver externally. It's interesting, before we came on air, you talked about the very differences though between kind of an SLA-based relationship with a client mm -hmm. versus you know, kind of your own internal people, right? Where basically you're trying to support them in, in whatever they need. So how are you kind of executing that with your client base, with this external facing version of ServiceNow? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, if you're high enough, if you're at 100,000 feet, everything kind of looks the same. <laughs> Something's wrong, I need a solution, you know, we close the ticket, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, the reality is when you start to get down and you start to look at the differences between internal execution and external execution, internal execution, typically a business is making decisions about what that service experience is going to be, and it's more or less the same. You know, yes, you have a VIP class and you, know, you do a little bit extra, but it's, it's more or less the same. In a business like ours with 83 different products, people are buying different types of support. They're buying bronze support, silver support, gold support, and those things have different attributes associated to them. Uh, when they can call us, if they can call us, uh, how fast we respond. So in other words, what, what are those service targets? Uh, all of those dynamics change based upon the relationship and the fee that we charge our customers to maintain their different products. So as a consequence, when we're entitling customers, when they you know, contact us and, and look to engage us, uh, we're having to understand what is the contractual relationship, what products have they purchased from us, are they covered under maintenance, what are the entitlements to those things that then define that service experience. So I, I would translate it to a dynamic experience versus a more you know, static or homogeneous experience that, that one might have if it's internal. So, so take that through one step further to your end customers. What, can you describe sort of the, the then and now for them in terms of that customer experience? Yeah, you know, it's, it, 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 I, here's another way to kind of look through this. Um, you know, I don't know how many of you guys have gray hairs that are listening to this, but I've sort of been through the uh, turnstile here a few times. And you know, I, I think back to the days when, you know, as an IT individual, uh, we ran, you know, everything is an incident. You know, an incident was an incident was an incident. And you know, through the years in idle, you know, V1, V2, V3, you know, it started to define the concepts. It says, well, wait a minute. You have things that break it apart. You know, there's something that's wrong, fix it, a business disruption. Uh, you have a root cause, you know, figure out what went wrong, right? The root cause of your incidents and eliminate it, right? Causality. Uh, you have knowledge as a whole discipline. You have a catalog, which is requested items that have workflows and automation that can exist underneath that. Our business, our software support business, or in, our, in particular our, our, our uh, customer support organization, has been in that an incident is an incident is an incident model for a long time. And so, you know, the, the notion that we can divide this into the different types of work um, is, is effective for everybody that's involved. And so that experience begins to change. You know, we start to disassociate, you know, what a support issue is from what a root cause is, a software defect typically in, in our use case for Epicor, uh, and what that looks like and how we're going to action that. You know, versus a catalog item or requestable service. You know, the fact that I can do automated fulfillment against that is something that we don't have today. We don't have a workflow engine that exists around that. And so, you know, the experience begins to change. But, but I'll, let me net it out for you, right? I don't think the external experience is overly different than the internal experience from one aspect. It's how quickly can you deal with my issue, right? Respond fast, get it solved fast, make it never happen if you can, right? It's the same sort of basics. Uh, what you need to layer on those basics then is what the engagement model is and what your customers you know, view as uh, you know, your uh, ability as a company to execute on their service needs. And that's where you start to you know, create some of the, you know, the, the differentiation. So that engagement model, um, 
what are they touching? I mean, are they touching Epicor software? Are they touching ServiceNow software? Yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> so we sell on-prem solutions. Uh, we also have cloud services. So you know, you can buy a subscription model. Uh, the the reality is, we don't manufacture every you know specific functionality anyone could ever want. You can walk the expo hall here at ServiceNow and. You know, you would say ServiceNow is not in that business either, and so we have a, mm. a vast partner network of add-ons, and in many cases, we provide frontline support. You know, for our software, for our companion products, which are our product bolt-ons or third-party bolt-ons, and then we do other services, which are true services, such as managing those environments, right? You know, such as in a cloud environment, and then other services like backup services to help, you know, with data protection and things of that nature. So it, it really is a it, it kind of runs the gamut depending on the type of customer that we're serving as to whether or not their IT organization uh, has the capabilities to execute on behalf of themselves or whether we're providing more of a turnkey solution for them, right? And so it is a wide variety of different things that we wind up doing for customers, right? It's no one answer. So you mentioned you know, backup services. It, it strikes my security question. I want to sort of get your, <clears throat> your take on this. We've seen ServiceNow enter into this domain. Um, how is the security conversation changing within your organization at the board level? Sure. Um, is it shifting toward responding as opposed to trying to keep the bad guys out because you know you can't keep them out or is it a mix? I'm sure it is a mix, but maybe you could add some color to that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it depends on whether you're asking me how do we handle security internal with inside Epicor, or whether you're asking me how do we act as good uh, uh, data storage and service storage for our customers. There really are kind of two different answers. Certainly there's a commonality between the two. Um, uh, I'll kind of give you a, you know, a sense of each. Um, we do look at the fact that we're in a cloud uh, with ServiceNow and we are maintaining customer data and customers uh, sometimes can give us sensitive information that we have a responsibility to manage and protect that. And so what our portal experience looks like and what our registration processes and our password management policies you know, is one element of it. We're also using some of the embedded capabilities within Site Service Now to do data encryption. Uh, and using role-based authentication will actually elevate roles to allow certain uh, users inside our organization access customer-sensitive data, which is stored encrypted inside of the environment. Um, that's particularly important for uh, regulated industries, which some of our customers are in. And then we've got one other dimension which has to do with who can see and touch my data, right? So, you know, uh, typically if you're in the government space, you've got regulations. Uh, we do some firearm work, and so ITAR is one of the uh, uh, regulatory bodies that covers that, that covers who can actually access and touch data. All of those are involved in that external facing customer service delivery. We have internal issues as well. If you look at our cloud business and how we actually manage that cloud environment, and so you know, what do we do for border security? Uh, you know, what do we do for borderless security? How does that all you know work and play? And so, uh, we use a lot of techniques in order to make sure that we're being good uh, stores of the service in that context. You know, both with Epicor data and our financial systems and, and other back office systems, as well as you know those systems that customers directly interact with for their consumption of service. So, what's the regime for? So what's the right regime, if you will, for the security? And who's in charge? Is it a bunch of technical guys? Is it the entire business? How does Epicor handle that? Yeah, so we, we, we do have a, a security officer that's in place, right? You, you know, they, they manage compliance, they, uh, you know, do all the things that a typical CSO, you know, would do inside an organization to set policies, and then you, of course, execute against policy and audit against, the, you know, that execution. All of those things are in play, and those things, of course, play into, you know, what it is we do in terms of delivery of service. So, um, you know, I can tell you, we take very seriously, you know, our customer uh, experience, our customer satisfaction levels. We talk about NPS, Net Promoter Score, uh, you know, is really one of our primary metrics as to whether or not you know, customers are satisfied with service. And security is a, is a key element of that. Right? Every CIO that's out there, to some level or another, is thinking about, are my partners you know, serving my security interests well? And you know, we take that responsibility you know, quite seriously. And so we've built an organizational practice around that. Mm. Yeah. Okay, lay out the vision for us. Um, knowledge 16, let's look, look out you know, five years, let's say. Where do you want to take your organization and your, your role, um, what do you see as the future? 
You know, I, 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 at the risk of, you know, over-flattering, you know, the executives at ServiceNow, I, I, I do align with the vision that ServiceNow has. Uh, I do think that workflow management is an untapped area. I think uh, companies do struggle uh, with how to do that properly. Uh, in the context of Epicor, uh, we, we started as a very product-centric company, and you know, if you think of the center of gravity, you know, being around one of those 83 products, you know, we run professional services and finance and customer support and sales you know, around that center of gravity. As we've changed our center of gravity you know, for the organization, get onto a common platform for customer support, it begs the question of, well, what is the workflow environment now for the other corporate entities that participate in the delivery of some customer service, right? Invoicing, I have a question on my invoice, an invoice is wrong. Uh, there's a finance role that, that is played there. Professional services has a role and there's rules of engagement that they have. So what, what does that look like? You know, the reality is there's workflow that lives underneath all of that, and today we run against many disparate systems, as many organizations do. You know, we're using Microsoft Project to you know, deal with our professional service project planning, or you know, we're, we're doing uh, email you know, throughout the organization. Uh, all of those things, I think, exist. Um, in order for us to excel uh, what customers want, which is that single point of contact, that you know, get me my answer quickly, get it right the first time, you have to have people that participate inside of the same ecosystem. And that means changing the way IT delivers services and solutions, right? Or at least the way IT is consumed. And I think service management, you know, as a platform, as a technology, uh, you know, as a process discipline, uh, as workflow definitions, start to give us a framework of what needs to be different and how do we do that? And how do we play in the same ball field? You know, I could say, is it ServiceNow? Is it, you know, some other product? I think ServiceNow absolutely has, uh, you know, the, the, the leader position, you know, in this market to make that happen. Um, it is an interesting question, though. Um, it's an untapped market, and uh, you know, as ServiceNow becomes a bigger market maker, uh, you will see the other two environments start to encroach on that space. So what happens in five years? You know, I think it's a little bit up for grabs you know, in some of that, right? The, the, the swim lanes are shifting, so uh, yeah. it's going to be really interesting. All right, well, theCUBE is here, managing to serve your content needs <laughs> around service management. Chris Orr, thanks very much to, for coming on theCUBE and sharing your insights. Absolutely, thanks for having me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back right after this short break. This is theCUBE, we're live from Knowledge16.